Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. My name's Nathan, and a little while ago, I played through and reviewed the mobile game called Happy Glass, which is available on Android and iOS. And in that video, I said that I would show everyone how to create the line drawing functionality of that game. And so that's what we're going to be doing for this video. Now, before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. All right, so here I have Unity open, and the first thing I'm going to do is set up our project so that it somewhat resembles the game Happy Glass. All right, so there we go. The first thing that I did was I changed our main camera so that it's projecting in orthographic, or in other words, that it's capturing a 2D image. And then the second thing that I did was I changed the clear flags to solid color and I set the background color so that it was kind of like an off-white. Now the only thing that you're going to need for this tutorial will be some sort of 2D image and that could be either a ball or some sort of character. And so here I have just a plain black circle for the ball that we're going to use to roll down the line that we draw. I'm going to start by creating our ball object. So I'm going to go to the Create drop-down menu in the hierarchy, and I'm going to select Create Empty. This will be the topmost parent of our ball object. And so we can go ahead and rename this object to something like Ball. I'm then going to right-click on this object and select 2D Object, and then Sprite. This will make this Sprite object a child to our Ball Parent object. We can then drag our ball 2D image into the sprite field of the sprite render component in the inspector. And as you can see, it's a little big, so the next thing I'm going to do is scale down our sprite object. And this way, we can scale down the image itself, but the topmost parent object will still have a scale of 111. The next thing that we can do is attach a rigid body component to our ball object in order to give it physics. So I'm going to select our ball parent object and I'm going to go to Add Component, and I'm going to type in Rigid Body. But I'm going to select Rigid Body 2D because we're working with 2D images. Now if we wanted to, we can mess around with some of the physics settings like gravity, but for now I'm just going to leave them as default. The next thing I'm going to do is add a circle collider to our object. So I'm going to click on the Add Component, and I'm going to go to Physics 2D, and I'm going to select Circle Collider 2D. I can then focus in on this object in the scene view by pressing F, and I'm going to flip it to 2D. I'm then going to reduce the radius so that the radius of our Circle Collider is the same as the radius of our 2D image. Now if I enter play mode, you can see that our ball has gravity, and so it looks like our ball is working properly. Next I'm going to change the body type of our rigid body 2D component to static, and that way our ball doesn't move until we change it back to dynamic. Now if we wanted to, we could make our ball object a prefab by clicking on it in the hierarchy and dragging it into our project window, and I have a folder called prefab, so I can just drop it in there. Now that we have our ball object done, it's time to start creating our line object. So I'm going to start by creating a new empty object, and then I'm going to rename this to something like line. We then want to add a line render component to this object, so I'm going to go to add component. I'm going to type in line and select line renderer. We'll then want to create a new material for this line, so I'm going to go to our materials folder. And I'm going to click on create, and I'm going to select material. We can then rename this to something like line material. And then we want to select our line object and drag in our new material to the material field in the inspector. I'm then going to set two point positions for our line and that way we can see it within our game. So I'm going to expand our positions field and I'm going to change the second position so that it has a five in the X direction. Now as you can see, our line is pretty thick, so I'm going to reduce the width to something like 0.15. Now if you want to change any more of the appearance of your line, you're welcome to play around with more of these settings and also your material settings that you have attached to this line. Once you have your line looking the way you want it to, it's time to add some physics to your line. 
And so I'm going to scroll down to the Add Component button, and I'm going to go to Physics 2D, and I'm going to search for Edge Collider 2D. Once you've added that component, it's time to turn this line into another prefab. But before we do that, I'm going to set the second point position of our line to zero in the X direction. That way we just have a single dot to begin with. And then I'm going to select our line object and drag it into the prefabs folder. Once we've made it a prefab, we can then go ahead and delete the line object from our hierarchy. And now it's time to start scripting the draw mechanic. And so I'm going to go to our scripts folder and I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call it line draw or draw line. And then going to open the script up in Visual Studios. Now the first thing that we need to do in this script is create some variables. And the first variable that we're going to create will be a game object variable to hold the prefab of our line object. And so I'm going to type public game object and this will be our line prefab. The next variable will be to hold our current line object. And so this will be a public game object, and then we'll call this current line. Our next two variables will be one for our line render component and also for our edge collider component. And so I'm going to type public line renderer, and then I'm going to call it line renderer with a lowercase l. And then our second one will be a public edge collider 2D, and I'm going to call this one edge collider with a lowercase e. Now we're also going to be receiving input from the user whenever they touch the screen, and we're also going to need to keep track of the position of their finger as they move it around to draw the line. And the best way to do this is to save the position of the finger into a list of vector 2s. And so I'm going to type public list and then in carrots we're going to type vector2 and then we're going to give it a name of finger positions. Once we've created these variables we can start programming our finger draw mechanic and if we take a step back from the problem we can start to think about what needs to happen and if we do that then we can break up this problem into some simple steps. The first step that needs to happen is that every time the player first touches their screen, we need to create a new line. And so let's create a function to do just that. And so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to type void, and this will be our create line function. Now, the first thing that we need to do inside this function is instantiate a new line prefab and then save that prefab into our current line variable. And so I'm going to type current line equals instantiate, and then I'm going to pass in our line prefab game object. And then the position doesn't really matter because it's the points on our line renderer component that determine where our line is drawn. And so I'm just going to instantiate it at the origin. So vector 3.0 and then the rotation also doesn't matter so quaternion dot identity now that we have a new line that's saved into this variable we can then get our line render component and our edge collider component and save those into our two variables so i'm going to type line render with lowercase l equals current line dot get component i'm going to pass in line render with an uppercase L, and then parentheses, semicolon. Oops, I have a minus, I need an equals. I'm then going to type edge collider with an lowercase e equals current line dot get component, and then pass in the edge collider 2D. The next thing that we need to do is clear our list because this is a new line. And so this is going to be finger positions dot clear. Now, even if our player just taps the screen, we want to put a dot wherever they tap the screen. But even that dot still has two points or positions. And so we need to set the first two values of our list to whatever our current finger position is. 
And so to do this, I need to first add to our list. And so I'm going to type finger positions dot add, and then I'm going to pass in camera dot main, and then dot screen to world point. And then we're going to pass in our input dot mouse position. This will get the player's current finger position and save the vector to value of that position into this list. And then we want to do this twice. So I'm going to copy this line of code and I'm going to paste it once again. The add function appends that value to the end of our list. The next thing that we can do is set the first two positions of our line renderer component. So I'm going to type line renderer dot set position and then the values I'm going to pass in will be a zero for the first element and then I want to pass in finger positions and then get the first element. We'll then set the second point by typing line renderer dot set position. This time we're going to pass in a one and then finger positions and then we'll get the second element, which is element one. And then finally, we can update our edge collider. So I'm going to type edge collider with a lowercase e dot points. And then I'm going to set it equal to our finger positions dot to array. So this function will first create a new line and save that line into our different variables. It will then set the first two points of our line render component and our edge collider component. Now all we have to do is call this function within our update function. And we only want to call this function when our player has first initially touched their screen. And so in the update, I'm then going to check to see if input dot get mouse button down with a zero as the parameter is true. That is for the left mouse button. And if this if statement is true, then we're going to call our create line function. Now let's create a function for when our player has moved his finger far enough for us to add a new point to our line. And so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to type void, and this will be our update line function. We can also add a parameter to this function, which will be of type vector2, and this will be our new finger pose. The first thing that we'll do is add this new value to our list, and so we'll type finger positions.add, and we're going to pass in new finger pose. The next thing I'm going to do is increase the size of how many points we have in our line renderer component. So I'm going to type line renderer dot position count and I'm going to then type plus plus. We can then set that new point to the value of our parameter. So I'm going to type line renderer dot set position and then the index value will be line renderer dot count or position count position count minus one. And this is because the index count begins at zero. And then the value that we're going to pass in is the new finger pose. Now the last thing I'm going to do is update our edge collider. And to do this, all we have to do is copy this last line from our create line function and paste it here. I'm then going to scroll up to our update function and after this if statement, I'm going to check to see if input dot get mouse button without the down, and then I'm going to pass in a zero for the left mouse button. This will check to see if we're pressing the mouse down. So this first if statement gets the first initial click, and then the second if statement gets whether or not we're holding it down. I'm then going to create a local vector2 variable. So I'm going to type vector2, and this will be a temp finger pose. And we're going to set it equal to camera with the uppercase C dot main, and then we want the dot screen to world point. And we're going to pass in input dot mouse position. We then need to check to see if this finger position and the previous finger position is greater than a set buffer value. And so to do this, we're going to type if vector2 dot distance 
and then we're going to pass in our temp finger position and then we're going to pass in our finger positions dot last and then for the second value we can pass in finger positions and then we can get the finger position dot count and say minus one we then need to check to see if this distance is greater than something like 0.1f and if it is then we can call our update line function and we can pass in the temp finger pose. Now let's go ahead and save this script and go back to Unity. Within Unity we now need to create an object to hold our new script. So I'm going to go to the create drop down menu, select create empty and we can rename this to something like game controller. We can then find our script and attach it we then need to set our line prefab variable. So I'm going to go to our prefabs folder, find our line object, and drag it in there. I'm also going to move our ball object over to the top left corner of our game view. So I'm going to select our ball, and then I'm going to type in negative 8 for the x, 4 for the y, and 0 for the z. Then let's go ahead and hit play and see how our game works. So I'm going to draw a line, and there you can see that it seems to be working. And if I then go to our ball game object and I change the body type from static to dynamic, you can see that it's now rolling down the line that we just drew. And so it looks like we have finally finished our line draw mechanic. So that is pretty epic. We were able to replicate the finger draw mechanic of the game Happy Glass and all the other drawing puzzle games that are out there. Now I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it to be helpful. If you did, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>